In this video, I'll show you four ways to pull data from another worksheet based on specific criteria. For example here, only extracting the rows where the hours worked are less than 10 into another worksheet. I'll show you how this works not just across separate worksheets, but also between completely separate Excel files. Let's get into it. So here's the Excel file we're working with, where let's suppose that in this new sheet down below, we want to extract all of the different transactions where the employee is Alice Wong. And by the way, you can download this Excel file for free in the video description to follow along. And for this, if you're just looking for a single value, then using an XLOOKUP or a VLOOKUP probably makes the most sense. So in here, I can just type equals XLOOKUP. We're looking for Alice Wong, comma. The lookup array is where can we find Alice Wong? So we can find her in this employee column. I'm just gonna select the entire column like that. And as the return, if we want everything returned, we can just select the whole area. So whenever it's matching to Alice Wong, we should get the correct answer. So you can see it's giving us the first one, which is project alpha. That makes sense as it's our very first transaction. While an XLOOKUP or a VLOOKUP are very easy to set up, you'll notice that they have one big limitation and it's that if you have more than one matching value. So in this case, for instance, we had Alice Wong up front, but we also had her down over here and a further time down below, etc. So in that kind of scenario, using the XLOOKUP or the VLOOKUP isn't that great. A better alternative is the advanced filter tool. And no, this isn't the same as just normal filters. Let me show you what I mean. Here, I'm going to navigate over to the data part and the advanced section is the one that we want. That said, we don't actually even need this header row. So I'm just gonna delete that. And from there, click on advanced. Once in this part, I'm gonna go to copy to another location, but the list range is our original data source. So it's gonna be all of this table right here. Then for the criteria range, this is what we want to filter by. So in this case, it's the employee being Alice Wong. Then the last part is the copy to. So where do we want the filtered data? Just gonna put it right below in B5. Press on OK and you'll notice it gives us the header and it also gives us the filtered data for Alice Wong. As you can see, this one's super easy to set up and it doesn't just work for text values. In this case, we have the employee name, but it can also work with numbers. So I can say like greater than 10, for instance, and we're gonna get the projects that are greater than 10 hours. So here I'm going to change that to hours worked. And then down below, let's go ahead and delete this whole section as we're going to try it again with a new filter. I'm going to go to the advanced as my list range. It's all of this data again. And the criteria this time, it's going to be the hours worked. And finally, we want to do a copy to another location and that be just down below. Press on OK. And you notice that we get all of the different projects that are greater than 10 hours worked. As I went through the second example, you might have noticed this method does have one big flaw and it's that it's not automatic. So if I change this from 10 hours work to let's say 15 hours work, you'll notice that nothing actually updates. That's why the filter function is a much more flexible alternative. Let me show you how it works over here. So we just need to type equals filter, hit the tab key, the array with basically the whole area. So we're just gonna select all of that comma, and as the include, it's basically the whole employee column whenever it's equals to under our lookup tab, Alice Wong. We can then just close a parenthesis and hit enter. It's really that simple to use. And of course, if we change the name from Alice to somebody else like Bob Smith in here, you'll notice that it's able to update accordingly. That's not all though. So far, we've been filtering by one criterion, but it also works with multiple criteria with one small tweak. So let's say we're looking for Alice Wong, where the status of the project is in progress. So in the answer is we should really only get two separate rows. For this, we need to make a change under the include part. First, I'm gonna add the parenthesis on this side, and then at the very end of the parenthesis, put an asterisk and then another set of parenthesis. Basically, this is where we're gonna add the second criteria. So we need to head to the original sheet and as the status part, we'll select all of that. And that's the one that has to be equals to in progress. So we'll go back in the lookup, select in progress. Now we've got two sets of criteria, one being the employee name and the other one being the status. 
we can close the parentheses and hit enter and you can see it's updated accordingly if i change this to completed that's also going to update so far we've seen how this works for separate worksheets within the same excel file and next we're gonna look at completely separate excel files but before we dive in, if you want to learn Excel and other in-demand data skills, I'd recommend you check out our Data Analyst program. It consists of five individual courses and over 300 lessons. First, in Excel, you'll learn best practices for formatting formulas and charts. Then, you'll apply your skills with real-life case studies, from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then, in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and create interactive dashboards. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting with applications like Excel and Power BI. Fourth, in Python, we'll start with the basics and eventually advance to analyzing real crime data in LA and even building a model to predict housing prices. Finally, in VBA and macros, you'll learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PNL reports, and much more. So click on the link in the description below to get started with our data analyst program today. So far, the filter function has been the best solution for pulling data within the same Excel file. But what happens when we want to pull data across separate Excel files? Over here, we have this data and we want to add it over to this side using the filter function. Let's give that a try. Hit the tab key there and as the array will select all of this area press the comma key and you'll notice right there that it's a bit different this time we actually have the name of the excel file then if we just continue on the employee area for the include is all of this section that we need to make it equals to the employee name which is alice wong we'll close the parenthesis and hit enter awesome that all seems to be working correctly let me actually make this one full screen and close the original data source as you can see when i closed it i also have the file path in it as well as the name of the excel file if you were to change the name of the file or change the name of where it's located then it's most likely going to give you an error also in my experience the filter function doesn't work that well when dealing with very large data sets Instead, a better alternative is to use Power Query. Let me show you how that works. Here is our original data and suppose that we want to paste this into another Excel file like this one right over here that's completely empty. Of course, we want to filter by some criteria though. For that, we'll go over to Data and click on Get Data from File and choose from Excel Workbook. Here we'll want to choose the workbook that has the original data. For me, it's called Pull Data. I'm just going to import that, give it a second to load. And within it, you'll notice that we actually see all of the different sheets. So in my case, this is the sheet that I want. And instead of pressing load, go to transform, which is we'll be able to make changes to the criteria. Right now, it's simply going to import everything, which is not what we want. We want the employee name to be Alice Wong only press on OK and basically we've just done all of the filtering there. You might have noticed the interface looks a bit different. That's because we're in the Power Query Editor. I know it might look a bit daunting, but in reality, this is a super useful tool, especially for data cleaning. Once we're happy with the filtering, we can click on Close and Load. Awesome. And now you can see that we have only the data that's specifically for Alice Wong. If we were to make some changes to the original worksheet, like let's say I just delete that first row and press Ctrl S to save. Now, when we go over to the new worksheet that's being linked and I just press on refresh, that's able to update with one click. Awesome, you now know four ways to pull data from another worksheet based on criteria. That said, if it was your first time hearing about Power Query and you're not sure how to use it, you should definitely watch this video over here as it's a super useful tool. Another useful Excel skill you should know is how to combine data from multiple Excel files, which you can learn how to do with this video over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.